you start to see the conflict within the community, even within the household, let the police know. We endorse Commissioner of Police Major General Anthony Anderson's plea. Far too many interpersonal conflicts have turned violent and have led to injury or death. We want a kinder, gentler Jamaica. A Jamaica that's able to talk through disputes without resorting to violence. A Jamaica that is respectful of and values life. A Jamaica that protects its vulnerable population. A Jamaica that is loving. A Jamaica that lives up to the ideals of Vision 2030. The place of choice to live, work, raise families, do business, and retire in paradise. It's your favorite magazine program with me, Theodore Henry, as your host. Welcome. Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your JIS News for Monday, July 4, 2022. The Statistical Institute of Jamaica, Statin, is reporting that the economy grew by 8.2% for fiscal year 2021-22 compared to the previous year. This was aided by a 6.4% growth for the January to March 2022 quarter when compared to the same period last year. In a statement, Statin indicated that the outturn for March was driven by 8.9 and 0.4% growth in the services and goods producing industries respectively. The Institute advised that economic activity was positively impacted by the easing of COVID-19 containment measures, including withdrawal of the disaster risk management order during the period. According to Statin, all services industry subsectors grew, led by hotels and restaurants, which recorded a 107.1% outturn. Jamaica and South Africa have signed a joint communique to strengthen their relationship and collaboration to support nation building. The signing took place during recent political consultations with Jamaica and South Africa at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade in Kingston. Representing both countries were Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Trade, Ambassador Sheila Seely Monteith, and South African Ambassador Maud Domo. Discussions were centered on cooperation in areas such as tourism, science, technology, the creative industries, and sport. Jamaica has long held a strong relationship with South Africa since supporting the country in the fight against apartheid. September this year will mark 28 years of official diplomatic relations between the countries since 1994. The Development Bank of Jamaica DBJ and Victoria Mutual Investments Limited have partnered to invest 15 million US dollars in a new facility that will provide additional funding for small and medium-sized enterprises SMEs. Both entities recently signed an agreement to establish the Jamaica Actus Small and Medium Sized Enterprise Fund 1, which will target equity support for the enterprises. International management advisory and consulting firms Actus Partners, which is headquartered in the United Kingdom, was selected to establish the SME fund. The focus of the support will be on businesses operating in areas such as technology, climate and renewable energy, agriculture and food security, and tourism. General Manager for the DBJ's Project Management Office, Hugh Grant, said the aim is to provide local MSMEs with additional access to finance through the provision of innovative financial instruments. A key component of the A2F project was to support the establishment of an SME fund, which would provide private equity and other instruments to support SMEs in Jamaica. Both partners from VM and Actos have acknowledged the venture as an important milestone and huge undertaking. What we're laying is a foundation for future growth. We would like to focus on high growth potential SMEs, which Jamaica is not short of at all. And we would like to address the, um, address the financing gap when it comes to equity in Jamaica, but also in the Caribbean region as well. Jamaica now has a legal framework in place for the monitoring and enforcement of the levels of lead in paint. This will take effect on January 1, 2023, following the country's adoption last month of the International Standard for Lead Limit in Paint and Other Surface Coating. 
Jamaica's move towards enforcing the JS358 2022 standards is welcomed by the Caribbean Poison Information Network, CARPIN. Poison Information Coordinator at CARPIN, Sharika Whitelock Balancing, says Jamaica is among 79 countries who have taken this position. Jamaica will now have a mandatory standard to protect our population from any exposure from leaded paint. Mrs. Whitelock Balancing said though a 2018 study shows that paints in Jamaica had no lead in them, exposure from other sources have been a re-emerging health issue in Jamaica. She said the adoption of the standard is a pivotal step in ensuring the right to health and well-being by limiting exposure. And finally, Jamaica is calling on governments of the world to act decisively in stemming threats to oceans around the globe. Minister Without Portfolio in the Ministry of Economic Growth and Job Creation, Senator Matthew Samuda, made the call on Wednesday as he co-chaired an interactive session on minimizing and addressing ocean acidification, deoxygenation and ocean warming. Minister Samuda reasoned that political will was necessary to implement solutions which will turn the tide on issues affecting the world's oceans. He also reiterated Jamaica's commitment to the Paris Agreement, which calls for a reduction in greenhouse gases. For every year, month or day that we delay, the required actions will intensify. Jamaica reaffirms that we all bear the responsibility to ensure that we meet the 1.5 degrees Celsius target to stay alive and call on our partners, especially those who emit more, to work assiduously to that end. Minister Samuda was representing Jamaica at the June 27 to July 1 United Nations Ocean Conference in Lisbon, Portugal. The conference was held under the theme, Save Our Ocean, Protect Our Future. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching. We've all seen the disturbing news headlines about incidents of domestic violence that have turned deadly. The eradication of violence in our society is everybody's business. Still, government is playing a lead role in eliminating this scourge. Take a look. Improving connectivity, maintaining water resources, increasing environmental protection, adapting to climate change, establishing residential and commercial spaces. We are on the path to building resi resilient, sustainable and adaptable infrastructure for a strong future. The Ministry of Economic Growth and Job Creation in the 2022-2023 financial year. It is no secret that investment in physical infrastructure, roads, bridges, ports, schools, health centers, etc. are essential ingredients to the securing Jamaica's long-term economic growth and sustainable development. And with that in mind, several infrastructure projects will start, continue or be completed this fiscal year. The state finance $274.5 million US dollar Montego Bay Perimeter Road project will get underway. In tandem with that, $212 million will be spent on roads in and around Montego Bay to provide a temporary bypass to the town center from Ironshore and Westgate. Preparatory work will take place for the construction of six bypass roads across five parishes. Three of the six projects under the ministry's $8 billion special capital expenditure program is also set to begin. Over in St. Mary, the Junction Main Road will be completed. Planning has commenced for the upgrade of 60 kilometers of roadway between St. James and St. Anne to move the road from two to four lanes. Bridges in St. Thomas, St. Andrew, Clarendon and Portland will get attention. And mitigating works to address stormwater flows on several vulnerable roads will be done. Work will also continue along the Southern Coastal Highway Improvement Project to include the May Pen to Mandeville Leg, Harbour View through St. Thomas and into Portland. An agreement has been reached to reforest areas that will be impacted by road construction. To the people being impacted neg negatively, I say, your patience, your fortitude, your faith and trust in the government will be rewarded in a tangible way. This government will deliver a once-in-a-generation integrated infrastructure that will deliver safe, reliable, quality roads 
potable water supply, water supply and sanitation, as well as fiber optic ducts that will enable future development. Yeah, yeah. The National Water Commission, the NWC, will lead the ministry's charge to increase access to potable water and sanitation services. Several projects are in train for communities in St. Elizabeth, St. Thomas, St. Mary, St. Catherine, Kingston and St. Andrew. And in partnership with the National Works Agency and the National Housing Trust, the NWC will undertake a $1 billion project to upgrade aged residential and commercial infrastructure in Manchester and St. Thomas. On the housing front, the draft National Housing Policy and Implementation Plan is being finalized and will be tabled as a white paper in the House of Representatives. Similar moves are being made with the amendment of the Rent Restriction Act. The Housing Agency of Jamaica has identified several projects to add 14,000 of the 70,000 housing starts promised by the government. Among them, Catherine Estates in St. Catherine, another 550 low-income housing solutions in the Greater Bernard Lodge development, and the acquisition of 68 acres to develop communities in Trelawney. Building and infrastructure works will also begin this financial year on the Rasta City Redevelopment Plan in Tivoli Gardens. So too will the Canterbury Relocation Project in St. James and the regularization of households in Sandy Park and Stanville in Kingston, as well as Bottom Pen in St. James. At the same time, the National Squatter Settlement Survey is ongoing, with 83,000 persons found to be living at 269 settlements surveyed across eight parishes. And even as plans advance to divest the Jamaica Mortgage Bank, the entity is continuing efforts to diversify its offerings to developers. The Urban Development Corporation, the UDC, has thrown its hat into the housing ring with the conceptualization of the mixed-use Caymanas commercial and housing development. The agency will also oversee work on the new Houses of Parliament complex at Hero Circle and the Climate Change Park in Portmore, St. Catherine. The Port Authority of Jamaica will also be undertaking commercial projects in the year. Already, the Portmore Informatics and Kingston Logistics Park development have been completed. The PAJ is also engaged in preliminary works to develop 50 acres of land in Falmouth, Trelawney. And the Development Bank of Jamaica, which is handling the Greater Bernard Lodge development, reports that sales agreements have been signed for the build-out of residential, light industrial and agricultural blocks. One of the major areas of focus for the government in this financial year is the declaration of the port of the Pedro Keys and the surrounding waters as protected area under the, the Act. The work in this area is far advanced and will protect 82,200 hectares of land and sea. Other environmental protection projects include the Air Quality Monitoring Program, an e-mobility project to transition to electric vehicles, and the development of a master plan for Helsha Beach. Work continues apace on the restoration of mangrove forests along the Palisados Port Royal protected area. Similar works are being conducted across the Rio Mino and Rio Cobre watershed management units with 427 trees being planted. A new protected areas policy is being targeted for implementation within the year. A watershed's emissions and updated climate change policies are also in the works. And amendments are planned for the Forest Act, the Wildlife and Protection Act and the Natural Resources Conservation Authority NRCA Act. At the Forestry Department, over a million trees have been planted under the 3 Million Trees in 3 Years initiative. A tree tracking app has been launched and the entity is benefiting from 16.69 million euros for the Improved Forest Management for Jamaica program. This financial year, the Met Service will concentrate on the continued expansion of the surface water observation network with installation of an additional data collection platform including automatic weather stations and sea level monitoring gauges, as well as testing lightning sensors. The Ministry's focus on climate action financing will continue. Among the programs is the development of Jamaica's long-term emissions reduction and climate resilience development strategy. A national adaptation plan is being prepared, and integrating climate change in local development planning is being piloted across four municipal corporations. No things are gone. I urge I urge all of my fellow Jamaicans to seek out the opportunities being provided through the Ministry of Economic Growth and Job Creation as a partner with you to build stronger for better.
goal of the DRF in violence prevention in our society is to mediate. We believe that mediation is really a very good thing in terms of resolving disputes um, at the court level, at the parish court level, and at the Supreme Court level. Now, let me tell you about some of the matters that may come at the parish court level. You and I live in a tenement yard and a fight. We report the matter to the police, it goes to court. The judge may say, well, you know, you are just uh, probably a teenager. Go to mediation and see if you can get a settlement. Because if you can agree, then you won't have a criminal record. We urge everyone, call our offices, come to our offices, no matter how simple the matter may be, come to us. We have persons who are trained. Today we pay tribute to one of our national heroes on this, the 129th anniversary of his birth. This national treasure was instrumental in Jamaica securing independence. He's the founder of a political party that's still active today, and he's also the father of a prime minister. Find out who he is next. The national flag flies proudly beside the childhood home of the right excellent Norman Washington Manley, symbolizing his status as a national hero and his contribution to Jamaica's journey to nationhood. His involvement in the country's campaign to independence was rooted in his resentment of the lack of rights for the poor working class. He was a man who devoted much of his life to looking after what we call the underdog. That was one of the things which drove him relentlessly as a political leader. And his advocacy, which had begun years earlier, took on a more defined role when he rose to lead the newly formed People's National Party in 1938. We have to see uh, Norman Manley's role in 1938 as a period in which he demonstrated his capacity for reconciliation and negotiation. As a statesman, Manley refused to be satisfied with the universal adult suffrage in 1944. He had bigger dreams, among them to see Jamaica take full control of its own affairs. So he became deeply involved in the move to develop a new constitution and the fight for full independence from Britain. Norman Manley believed that the organization of the people in the political parties would be the instrument through or the vehicle through which Jamaica would be able to decolonize itself from the dominance of British rule. He tried to get a constitution that would reflect both the aspirations of the Jamaican people, but would also allow for that system to operate in a harmonious way that would ensure the full participation of the citizenry consistent with a parliamentary democracy. As leader of the People's National Party, he got his first taste of victory in 1955 when Jamaicans went to the polls. It was a vindication of all that he had campaigned for. He regarded it as a mandate to put in place programs that would result in the social transformation and the economic growth of Jamaica. The national hero and chief minister left an extensive legacy. In addition to his role in obtaining universal adult suffrage in 1944, N.W. Manley also founded the National Workers' Union in 1952. Two years later, in 1954, he led efforts to secure executive powers for elected representatives. 
It was also under Norman Manley's leadership that Jamaica achieved full internal self-government in 1959, a precursor to political independence that would come three years later. With Manley at the helm, the government established the Bank of Jamaica, the Development Bank of Jamaica, and the College of Arts, Science and Technology cast, now the University of Technology. And among the indelible contributions which he has made to the entire Jamaican society was the granting of 2,000 free places in secondary schools during the 1950s. His legacy also includes the Small Business Loan Board, the Jamaica Welfare Limited, now called the Social Development Commission, the Foundation of Youth Service, and the success in securing land tenure for farmers. Manley's dedicated service to Jamaica earned him the Order of National Hero, the highest award to be bestowed on a citizen. Norman Washington Manley led a busy and public life in service to his country. We know he was an athlete, soldier, and brilliant lawyer, but those who knew him admired him for other reasons. Undoubtedly, Norman Washington Manley was devoted to excellence, the fulfillment of purpose, and the promotion of human dignity. He gave us a confidence in ourselves, a belief that there was nothing that Jamaicans could not achieve, uh, no level of performance beyond their grasp. Revered as the father of the nation, Manley was an inspiring leader who touched the lives of Jamaicans home and abroad, making an indelible mark internationally and in the region. In his final speech in 1969, he asserted that the mission of his generation was to accomplish political power for the black masses of the people from which he sprang. Mission accomplished, he declared. And having accomplished his mission, Norman Washington Manley died on September 2, 1969. What are we are full of our roots and culture? <laughs> that was in Jamaica 60. Jamaica 60? What a piece of news, Miss Matty. I feel like my heart going boss up. Just in. The island of Jamaica is on the verge of celebrating its 60th year of independence. Oh, well, we have to celebrate now. <laughs> they said the people them in them come here, you know. But you see, when our people decide, say the other people them free paper, oh no, them say if it's war, start it, whatever. We are collect medal, Panta Fight, you know. The celebrations are slated to begin on January 1st, 2022. Organized by the Ministry of Culture, Gender, Entertainment and Sport. We have more in this report. I am on site and planning activities are ablaze. Persons are advised to download the Reggae Jamaica app to know what it pre. What it pre. <laughs> activities for the Jamaica 60 celebration. Yeah. If they don't know the app, to get the updates then. Christopher Columbus saw it here when he came. It means wood of life in Latin. It's world renowned for its medicinal, ornamental, and industrial properties. But around these parts, it's known as the lignum vitae, the island's national flower. It is a tree that is native to Jamaica. It's native to Cuba, basically the Greater Antilles and parts of Central America. Its native habitat is pretty much dry alluvial type plains. It also grows in well-drained limestone areas. This short, compact tree takes over 100 years to grow up to 30 feet tall. Due to its luminous purple-blue flower, alluring orange-yellow fruit, evergreen foliage and attractive rounded shape, the tree dots across the Jamaican landscape, shading many a houses, streets, and complexes. Since time immemorial, the lignum vitae has been touted as the most useful tree in the world. It produces a gum, and that gum 
used to be regarded as uh, highly favored for medicinal uses. Its body, gum, bark, fruit, leaves and blossom are used to produce medicine. In colonial times, resin from the tree was used as a mild laxative and as a diuretic. The leaves were used as a remedy for respiratory, inflammatory, congestion, and neurological disorders. Its bark eases pain from sprains, strain, rheumatism, and arthritis. And I'm sure many Jamaican homes still ward off flies with its branches. Its most noted feature is the wood. Because it's slow growing, it's very, very dense. And that density and the, the, the weight of it gives it a number of industrial uses. That's because the lignum vitae is infused with an oil which makes it waterproof. It's ranked as the world's densest, hardest, and most durable traded wood. In addition to being used for making exquisite furniture, the lignum vitae was used to insulate trolley cars for the rail industry. The wood also made the propeller shaft bearings of most ships back in the day. Lignum vitae wood is also ideal for these creations. The lignum vitae is truly the holy grail of plants. Did you know that Jamaica was the first island in the English-speaking Caribbean to gain independence from Britain? Yep, we did so on August 6, 1962, which would mean that this year we're celebrating our Diamond Jubilee, 60 years of political independence. But that's not all. We're the first in the region to have a piped water supply system and the first to have electricity in a private home. As we celebrate Jamaica 60, we're also celebrating our many achievements and firsts, such as being the first commercial producer of bananas in the Western Hemisphere. The same is true for the establishment of a rum industry. Chocolate milk was created on our island home, so too are the citrus fruits, artinique, and ugly. We've even developed three distinct breeds of cattle, the Jamaica Hope, the Jamaica Red, and the Jamaica Black. A popular glaucoma medication from the ganja plant was created in a Jamaican lab, and just recently, Jamaican scientists have developed wipes that can detect if you're unwell. We have a lot to be proud of as a nation as we chart a course for the next 60 years, all in a bid to make Jamaica the place of choice to live, work, raise families, and do business. <laughs> That's all the time we have left for today's edition of Jamaica Magazine. Catch this and other programs in full on our website and on our YouTube channel. Keep the lines of communication open, email us, join us on all the major social media platforms, and download our mobile app for up-to-date government news you can use. On behalf of the entire team here at the JIS, I'm Theodore Henry. Thanks for watching. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.